I like to take my shoes off. <laughs> so, whoops, maybe I should hold the mic when I say this. Ah. Y'all usually get up this early? <laughs> no? Man, Netflix messed me up, man. It had me. It was this, uh, it's this, it's this um, series, Brianna put me on to it. It's called You. Have y'all seen that? Oh my gosh, it'll get you. Like I, I watched the whole season in one day, <laughs> the whole season. Um, I wanted this to be like a conversation. So at any moment in time, if you're like, have a question or you're like, oh man, oh, I wanted to, whatever it is, just, just say it. You can stand up and yell it. We can get you a mic, but that's, that's kind of where I'm able to glean the most is when it's like a conversation. Um, the theme for today is surreal. What, what comes to mind when y'all think of surreal? Anybody can just yell it out or, what's surreal? Dolly. Dolly? Cool. Nice. Deja vu, magical. Mystical. I looked up uh, a synonym was uh, dream life or dream like actually. Um, I like that synonym for surreal. I could talk about like a process when I'm creating, when I feel like I'm reaching these kind of surreal moments, but I think it would be more interesting to talk about how to live a surreal life where your entire like being can go into whatever you're creating. It can, I don't know, art and poetry is, it's like an extra limb to me. I can't separate it. There is no surreal moment. It's all surreal. It's this, all of this, waking up whenever, like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm selling poems and art and traveling around, it all feels surreal. This feels surreal. 10 years ago, if you would have been like, man, you know, whatever, I would have been like, oh, get out of here. I would have been blushing, nah, stop it. I'm not gonna do any of that stuff. But I mean, like, and I think it, I think it comes from exploring those utopias of presence. And I think today, I don't know how long I have to ramble. How, how long is this? How long do I? 15? Okay. Yeah, so like. <laughs> Like, yeah, I want to kind of unpack that, man. I think, I, think there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of gems there, just kind of getting in tune with that internal compass, learning the process of getting there, which was the hardest part for me was discovering what it was I felt was my zone of genius. If we all have this zone of genius, we're all creatives. We all have this kind of brilliance in our bones. All right, how do you... Like, how do you hone it into the other things? Just because you don't monetize your, what you've been blessed, your gift or whatever it is, just because you can't monetize it doesn't mean you can't use it as a tool. If I wasn't selling poems, if I was like a bartender, you'd be able to taste the poetry in the drink. You'd be able to, like, it's still in my being. Like, it, there would still be no separation. If my homegirl, she's a lawyer, she always wanted to be a ballet dancer. She's an amazing like, dancer, phenomenal. And in the courtroom, she has a lot of rhythm in the way she like, moves the conversation. There's a dance in the way that she practices her craft. If she was an architect, it would be, it would be the same thing in the buildings. It would, be, it would be a space that you just felt the rhythm. You felt like moving in the space. We, we can bring that, and I think the closer you get to, you, you get to that, is the, you get closer to this surreal existence, this dreamlike, this dreamlike state. Um, Hafiz, yeah, any of y'all know Hafiz? You know Hafiz? Are you a writer? No? What's your favorite color, I'm curious? Red? All right. All right. Um, yeah, Hafiz, he has this, uh, he has this poem, and, and I feel like it kind of speaks to, to all of this. He, uh, he was trying to figure out his gift and his craft, and um, he had a mentor. Do you guys have mentors? Show of hands, who has like mentors? Man, mentors are like an IV, man. It's like vital. I got like 20 or 30 mentors. I, I can't get enough. You, you gotta have mentors. 
Um, but he turned to his mentor, he's like, hey, I'm, and I'm kind of like summarizing the poem. He didn't say like, hey, bro, da, 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 but I'm going to just put that in the art. So he was like, hey, man, like what makes you my mentor? Like why, why you? We both write, we're both poets. What makes you the guy, the, the, the mentor, the head person? And uh, he turned to Hafiz, he said, only this. If a herd of wild buffalo were to storm our, our tents and knock over our empty begging bowls, nothing was spilled from yours. But God has placed something invisible in my bowl. And if that were to be knocked over, it could drown the whole world. And what he was getting at was, we all have that invisible thing in us, right? Uh, if you go to a tree and you break open an apple, you could break open the seed. The invisible stuff in the seed is the, is the essence of the whole tree. So we all have this invisible brilliance in us. I think the key is the discovery of it. You guys are all creative in here. I'm curious, or I guess my, my hope is the I don't know, the intentionality behind discovering that invisible stuff and, and using that as the secret sauce, the drip, the, the wave, you know what I'm saying? Like, in whatever you're doing, in whatever you're creating. Um, I don't know, I can, I, can, I can talk about this stuff, like, and, I, and then I start feeling like I'm rambling, like, oh man, like, so if any questions we can, like, like anything on your mind, like, hey man, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm like, yeah, and then you guys, you know what I'm saying? Back and forth. Any questions, whatever it is, you. Or should I throw you the mic or? You? That would be why. That could be surreal. Like this, this we still do surreal. Uh, pass him the mic. Or you want to just yell it? Yeah, just yell it. How do I? Like, how do you, I guess, define success, but at the same time, stay content within that process where it's not glamorous and you know it's easy to doubt yourself? How do you stay content in those times? Right. Um, the su the success part, I see success more as like how much time have I like won for myself? If I can like sit on a bank of a river with my buddies and we can laugh and I don't feel like I'm wasting any time, that's like success. That's a home run, you know? As far as the other piece, um, you're always gonna kind of doubt yourself. I had an exhibition here in 2016 um, and I was terrified. And my body was even resistant to me pushing. It's like, I felt like I was leveling up. Like it was some new, can we curse on this? Can I curse? No? All right. It was. Now I feel weird if I curse. <laughs> but like it was, it was like a new thing and I was like really trying to push myself to make it happen. I had put a lot of, uh, I had some Grammy executives flying to Chattanooga. There was a couple people that uh, produced some pretty big shows for MTV and stuff like that flying in that I know from the music industry. And um, I was so nervous. And this was like my first big solo exhibition. And um, like, I was sabotaging myself. I was trying to move these weights. I don't work out. I'm a small guy. I don't, that's not my way. But I was like moving weights. Like, man, let me just, I was doing busy work. The weights fell on my foot. I thought I broke my foot. This was like a week and a half before the show. I was just, I was doing silly stuff that I know now was resistance. And I think as creatives, we're all gonna feel that resistance, especially when you're doing something you're terrified of. Uh, so yeah, the courage to push through that, that's what, I don't know, the content word isn't even in there. It's just more of a, I got it, like I'm in the wild, man. Like I, I got to do it. I can't not, I can't not do it. I got to. So uh, yeah, we did the show. It was great. We celebrated, had a bunch to drink. And we howled at the moon and it was awesome. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, yeah, what's up? When did you know you were a poet? Or how did you find the magic to teach? Man, man, a teacher in middle school, she, she gave a damn. It, the only teacher, um, the only teacher I've had that cared 
And I always wrote from being little. I get on like punishment or get in trouble, I'll go in my room and write or draw. And the writing is like, I don't know, it's just, I love language. I love words. I love, I love everything about them. And in, in middle school, this teacher, we had to write some poetry, and I wrote this poem, and she framed it. I saw it on the wall, like she framed it next time I came in class. Um, it did something to me, man. So like, yeah, that was, that was huge for me. I think that's when I realized like, yeah, this is it. And then I did a bunch of silly jobs until I got brave enough to leave, to jump. Anyway. Huh? What made you break up? What made me do what? What made you break up? Oh, uh, I just, I didn't feel fulfilled. Um, and you know, there's nothing worse than um, seeing somebody do something you know they have no business doing. You know what I'm saying? I was doing weird jobs, man. Like, I was like, there's nothing wrong with what I was doing. It's just, was, I was bagging groceries at Food Line, and I'm like writing poems. And it's just, it was just, I didn't have no business bagging groceries. I, I, I could have, I don't know. Like, you know when you're not doing what, what it is you should be doing, or what it is you were, your purpose. I think if you can become that thing, whatever it is, if I can become a poem, it doesn't matter where I'm at. I, you can't fire someone that's in their purpose. You, that, you know what I'm saying? You can't fire Michael Jordan. He can't get fired. He's, you know, he's like so in tune with his thing. It doesn't matter what he's doing. I think in all of our crafts, if you're a carpenter, if you're a, a creative director, uh, I'm running out of job. <laughs> I haven't worked in so long. If you, you know, uh, whatever jobs there are, if you're doing whatever it is, like, if you, if you put, your, put that sauce in there, your gift, you, you can't lose. You, it's, I don't know. I think, to be honest, we're, I feel like we're friends now because we're like all laughing together and stuff. Uh, I, I, I still don't know if some of the people that buy my work, I don't even know if they love it. I don't. It's like when we meet, they buy into who I am as a human being. We make that connection first. And then they look at the art. And some people, it's obvious. They're just completely moved by it. They buy it. That's amazing. Feels great. But then there's some where, I mean, I don't know. They'll look at me and say, hey, uh, this just says, like, it might be something simple. I write, like, a mantra that I came up with. Uh, and he'll say, oh, yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, I, I, I want to buy it. But he, I don't even know if he likes it. I don't, but I think since I put a part of like my being into the piece, like who I am as a, as a person, since he likes me as a human being, now he feels like compelled to grab the piece. It's, 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 I'm having trouble explaining it, but I wish I could like take you guys and like put you in a like pouch and then like bring you with me to a show so you can see like, it, it happened in October. There was a guy, he, um, he, he didn't even see the piece in person. It was a piece that I have, uh, I made with Audrey. We collaborated on a piece out in the Hamptons. And I showed him a picture. And he's like, how much? And I said, uh, 20 grand. He says, all right, I want that one, this one, this one. And he bought a ton of art. He's never even seen it. I don't even know if he's going to like it. Why did he do that? I think I just want to kind of be two things. One, before I create a piece, I always like, I'm a spiritual brother, so it's like, I get super prayerful and like, I just want there to be some type of, like tap into whatever I feel like was poured into me and pour that into the work I'm creating. Like being a good steward of what I feel like I was given. And then number two, I wanted to, this is gonna sound generic, but I just wanted to do what it does. You have it in your room. If you're feeling good, I wanted to remind you of that good feeling. If you're feeling down, I want I wanted to remind you to sit with the sadness a little longer. There's a lot of beauty that comes. I mean, when y'all are sad, do y'all find yourself listening to some sad music sometimes in a weird way, it kind of helps. It's, I think it's good to kind of sit with it just for a little bit. Um, oh. Can I read y'all something right quick? Yeah. 
man, so there's this poem. It was about that very, that very thing that you asked. Um, man, let me see. Uh, ah, I got it. It's called, uh, and I, I posted this actually like a week ago. It's called My Eyes So Saw. This isn't my poem, but it's a poem that was written 13th century. Very, very beautiful. But it's along the lines of what you said. Don't surrender your loneliness so quickly. Let it cut more deep. Let it ferment and season you as few human or even divine ingredients can. Something missing in my heart tonight has made my eyes so soft, my voice so tender, my need of God absolutely clear. I think that was Cash App or PayPal that kind of just interrupted whatever that noise was, I don't know. But you, you get the point, right? Like, I, man, I, there's, there's a lot of beauty that can come in just like taking a second. Everything don't have to be butterflies and rainbows. So I wanted to do what it does. I wanted to take you there, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how to work this. Uh, man, that's, that's like picking your favorite child. I mean, I, I know which one is my favorite, but you just read, I don't know, man. Who's your favorite child? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, man, I don't know. That's a, that's a tough, uh, sorry. That's, um, that's tough. I don't know. Just, just grab one. Who is, who else raised their hand? You ever worry? Oh, totally. How do you deal with that? Uh, I, he asked if I ever worry. Totally. I worry about the weirdest things. Um, but it doesn't deter me enough because uh, those moments where I worried before and I did it and it turned out OK, it's like these little steps of, all right, and also from failing. Like I used to skateboard, so it's like it, I learned how to fall. And then it became, so the bigger the stairs got, the more okay it was, the more excited I was. I'm gonna put this phone over here because it just keeps, but yeah, I got like, I don't know, you just get, it allows you to go bigger, allows you to do more. So in the, in the creative world, my first two years, man, I think like, my first, my first nine months, I made $150. The whole year, like nine months, $150. So it'd be moments where like my mom be like, hey, listen, I know you broke, boy. Here go $50, go get some food. Or I'm like, got 10 bucks, and I'm like, all right, so I could put like three in the gas tank. This one gas was a little cheaper. Three in the tank, all right, I can do two at McDonald's maybe or something. This is before I knew McDonald's was like poison. Like, all right, put two at McDonald's. <laughs> and, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I get uncomfortable with being at the bottom, then you eliminate that fear. So it's, it's no longer a necessity for you to have this or that. Now the world is your home. Like, you just, ah, it's, yeah. Yeah. I hope I answered your question. Okay. Hey. Oh, like, like the thing that you guys had up on the screen before? Like, told everybody's creative. And you're always practicing creating your own inner world. Like, even right now, there's some things within you guys that you're constantly recreating and hashing out and laying out and unpacking, then packing back up. I mean, that's like a, a constant ritual, I think. So, totally, absolutely. Um, yeah, do, do you feel like being a type A personality, do you feel like there's something you struggle with that keeps you from doing certain things? <laughs> ah. Is there anybody in the crowd that's a type A that like, what's your biggest struggle being? Feeling, feeling like I need to control different things. Ah, okay. Uh, 
Ah, okay. So, what is your solution to get? Look, I'm this. I want to learn. Like, so, what is your solution to getting around it as a type A? Getting more uncomfortable more often. Nice. Get it, y'all heard of getting more uncomfortable more often? That's beautiful. You all right? <laughs> Yeah. What is there left for me to do? Yeah. Um, the the stuck part. Um, I think it. I think the stuck piece might be an illusion, because there are times where I thought I was stuck, and in actuality, it was the process for me to get to the thing. Like if I didn't have that quiet time of sixty or ninety days, I couldn't have got to this other place. Um, and so I think it. For me, I think the stuck piece is an illusion. The second part of that question is just like lock yourself away in a cave if you have to, you know? That's kind of what I do. Um, when I was writing music for artists in the music industry, um, we were working at a Kid Cudi studio and um, it's super competitive, writing music. You'll walk in a room and there might be 10 other writers. Like you were feeling all special, like, oh, y'all want me to write this song? Oh my gosh, this is great, this is amazing. And then you go in and it's like 15 people and they've done way more than you have. Like these are like platinum, like they're just huge. And some of them have teams, like it's one guy, but he has like 10 writers waiting on him outside and like downstairs in the lobby. And so it's like, it's, it's ultra competitive. And so I just, I had to get in the practice of not worrying about competition. I don't even, I don't look on nobody's page. I don't wanna follow nobody. Like, I don't wanna do that. Like, I just let them, let them do their thing. I think um, it's, 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 it's easier said than done. I know it's still gonna be a challenge, but I think you got it, you know? Yeah. Did that help any? Did that? Okay. <laughs> Anybody else? What do you say to someone who doesn't know what their team or their purpose is? What do you say to someone that doesn't know their their thing or their purpose? Their thing or their purpose? Man, uh, I don't say anything. <laughs> I just kind of, I just kind of. You gotta let them find it. You know, um, one of my mentors he told me in the very beginning. He said, "Hey, listen, only listen to about half of what I'm telling you." I was like, what? It was a weird introduction as me, like I have a notepad, I'm ready. He's like, because in, I learned there's a lot of truth to that. Like what I'm telling you guys right now, that, that worked for me, you know? We're, we're different, you know? So it's like, I would hate to, to put some type of obstacle in your way of your own kind of process that's gonna find you. I, I would say this, for me, it took long walks and doing stuff that made me scared and getting uncomfortable. And there's a playwright that said, uh, he was like, man, I'm lost too. I just got in the habit of doing. And I think in that habit of doing, your purpose will kind of, you, you'll kind of discover where you lose time. You look at your watch like, wow, I've been doing this for eight hours. I didn't even realize the time flew by. Beyonce, she said in this interview, um, she was feeling like lightheaded. And they were like, you all right? She's like, yeah, I forgot to eat. It, she hadn't eaten in two days. Like she was so lost in her thing. Um, I don't want you to go crazy or nothing, but yeah, like if you get in the habit of doing just things, it'll find you for sure. Yeah. Feel inequipped to. Do I so? Do I ever feel like I don't know if I can convey the thoughts in my head? I used to, yeah. Um, you do it enough. You do it enough. You do it enough, and you 
I think you, I think you can like I think it's just a creative muscle. You just gotta kind of work it out, and you're adding like weight, and in your brain it's like you have this big amount that you want to lift, but I think it's like a process, and it gets to a point where you have this creative confidence to where you feel like you can come with a solution that's unique from anyone else in the room. It doesn't matter if you're an expert in it or not. I, I don't know anything about yachts, like a decor. Like if someone was like, yo, Genesis, can you, uh, I want you to like do some interior design stuff for this boat. I don't know anything about it. I just feel creatively confident. So I'm like, oh, what? Yeah, man, man let me see the uh, thing, the blueprint, whatever it is. And I look at it and be like, all right. And I could put the thing up and be like, you know, I don't like the way this look. I just, I don't know. And when he walks in, it's going to feel like some poetic shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> see, that curse word felt, that, that felt natural. <laughs> but it's like, uh, it's a muscle. I think the more you do it, the more and more. But yeah, early on, I did feel that way, totally. Oh, man, this guy. Talk about the value of hanging out with people different than yourself, like you and I. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, that's <laughs> mad. And uh, we, I think a lot of the conversations we have, it's just refreshing to have somebody in your tribe that you can kind of have different opinions with. And, and I don't know we can kind of take our hair down and just speak, speak free. He might walk in and say some outlandish things, uh, and I can respond to that in my own outlandish way, and we can laugh about it, and I don't know. Well, that wasn't even a question. That's just... <laughs> do do y'all have people in y'all tribe that you can just say whatever you want to? And Chattanooga's a small city, and sometimes you feel like and I don't know if y'all feel this way. Y'all can tell me if you do or you don't. Sometimes you feel like, like you just, let's say there's a truth and you just want to express it. I've gotten in trouble before just being honest. I mean, the saying is, we're in a coffee shop and, you know, this is a small town. So had these three or four people and then you got to look around and be like, hey, man, did you see the da 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 da? Like, <laughs> when you have someone that you could just be completely open with, it's, uh, it's refreshing. I think that's why I love art, because I can literally say whatever it is I want to say. No one can tell me. Like, I don't play the gallery, man. You got you to gotta make what you want to make. You got to do what you want to do. Y'all know Bukowski, Charles Bukowski? Man, he had this poem. He was like, your life is your life. Know it while you have it. Man, don't let it be clubbed in a dank submission. You got to... You gotta know it while you have it, man. I wish I could do a magic trick right now, like pull it, like, <laughs> and it's like, oh, and it's like, boom. Yeah, I love what you said about being at the bottom of the world being your home. Do you think wealth has been your reality? Is wealth, is wealth a kind of slavery? Is wealth a kind of slavery? I think, it can be. I think anything can be. I think the mindset, when you observe people long enough, you realize the biggest prison is the mindset. And I was at the juvenile detention center yesterday, given a, I was talking to the kids there. And um, one kid, he wanted to be a writer. And I'm like, bro, this is beautiful. He was suspicious of that, because I complimented it. Man, you don't like this. No, nah, for real, this is dope. This is, I like this. For real? Yeah, man, like, when you get out of here, hit me up. I'm gonna leave my number. Like, let's, let's, like, let's cultivate this. He's like, oh, no, man, I don't get out. I didn't realize that he, he had life. He, I can't, I can't tell you what, what he did, but he, when he turns 18, he goes to Third Street, he's got life. He doesn't get out. And so, and he's in a literal prison. And uh, so I talked to my homeboy about it. A friend of mine, he went to jail for 15 years. He got out after serving like 11. I'm like, bro, what, what, do, you, what do I say? I kind of froze up when the kid told me that. I didn't want to give him no generic, oh man, well, you know, I didn't know what to say. He's got life. That scared me to death. And uh, he, was like, he was like, man, it's rough, but after about six years, you start to, if you've been reading and doing this and doing that, he had some 
his own pathways of getting there. But he said he, he just freed his mind, his mindset shifted, and he kind of escaped the prison a little bit. He, he could escape that situation by holding something beautiful in his mind. Um, so even if you're around wealth, even if you become wealthy, whatever, whatever it is, I think um, it's a mindset thing. I don't know. Do y'all, would y'all, what do y'all, well, I can't ask. Yeah, can I, yeah, what do y'all think about that? That was a great question. Does anybody have a, something they want to say about that? It's totally a mindset. Mindset? I've met so many people in my life just because of the situation I grew up in. Mm-hmm. The astronauts and whatever. And, uh, you grew up around astronauts? Yeah. And, uh, I said, well, it must be really cool up there. And he just said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. He was really doing something he loved to do. One word. Nice. Oh yeah. You can do you want. Oh yeah. And you have the courage to do whatever you want. I think wealth is a scary thing because people perceive wealth as power mm -hmm. and we're living it right now in mm -hmm. our country. And it's not power. Right. It, it, it's just a thing. Wealth gives you things. It doesn't give you power, it doesn't give you the ability to control people. Absolutely. So I think that's where the slavery people become slaves to that wealthy person. No, I agree. Right now. I agree. Huh? Money will put stuff in your house, but not in your heart. Boom. <laughs> We're killing it right now. <laughs> you said about putting stuff on your stomach, though, too. Like, what happens when you're responsible for other people in your life, too? No, I mean, I think there's a balance. I think it's all, like he was saying, I think if I had to sum it up, money is a magnifier. I don't think it's, I think it could be a protection. I think it's, can be great if you know how to use it. You know how to use a knife. A knife can be great, but I, I mean, there's some crazy shit you can do with a knife too. <laughs> so it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think, uh, I think that's where it is. If you're a womanizer, if you have more money, you'll probably be a bigger one. If you're a very giving person, you have more money, you're probably gonna give more. If you are very stingy, you have more money, you got more to lose, probably gonna give much less. Like, it, I, what I've seen, it just becomes a magnifier, which I think goes back to the mindset piece. There's some, there's some young guys I mentored that came from some very chaotic environments. When I bring them with me to LA, or we go out to, the, there's some places like the mindset that they have, some of them, they're ready, they can do it. But there's a, there's a lot of those brothers that they, the mindset is just still in a, it's like post-traumatic stress. It's like, it's still in this chaotic place. So even though the outside changes, like, I don't know. I still think a lot of it goes back to the mindset. But yeah. You, is, uh, oh man, it's time. You guys are cool. How do we do, how do we end? <laughs> I don't know, I didn't want it to end. How do we do it? Do it just, do we just like, oh, and stop. I <laughs> just <laughs> go. Oh man, a poem. Um, no, nah, I don't got it. <laughs> uh, I mean, I can find one on my phone. You would think I'd know one in my heart. It's over there. You forget my phone's over there? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of phone do you have? Uh, iPhone or Android? iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, I no, I sent somebody a text <laughs> message and they have an iPhone. I love Android. See, it's on one, th yeah, there you go. I love Android and I sent him a message and I guess my message came up a different color and he sent me a text back like, hey man, is everything all right? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what are you talking about? It's like since I didn't have an iPhone, he thought I was like struggling. <laughs> That's crazy. I didn't know it sent y'all a different color. Like, mess I didn't know Android, I don't know. All right, so, so like, this is, this is, I'm gonna show you a recent, recent one I did. Um, this was for, it's this artist in New Zealand. She, um, her mom was a refugee. They like escaped some really wild kind of persecution and um, they moved to New Zealand. And I think her mom escaped like 1968 or something. And she just put out this single that became uh, number one in New Zealand, is number one in Australia. And she's like riding this wave, super awesome human being. It's really simple. Where do we go from here? Very simple, it's just a sentence. But like this is what I was saying before with the whiskey thing, like, if I wasn't doing this, it didn't matter what I was doing, conversation, um, a bartender, whatever it is, you should still feel the poetry, you should still feel the, the texture and whatever it is. And so I, I sent her that and she was like, oh shit, this is amazing, ah, blah, blah. And it's just, where do we go from here? That's it. I don't know, it's, it's, something about, it's something about it, the color that, um, that really moves them. I don't know. That was the most recent one I, I just did. And uh, yeah, that's a poem, <laughs> it's a poem. Y'all give it up for John Sess. You, you got a good voice. <laughs> You have like a the volume. Yeah, it has your voice has some bass in it. Like you could <laughs> like you could be like, hey, this is Cody. You listen to the smooth jazz. <laughs> <laughs> you, you should do, you could do radio, man. Everybody give it up. Oh my gosh, dude, it was such a delight to have you here with us today. Thank you for taking the time. Oh, definitely.